Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barsonistas, also known as The Gluttonous Geek, and you are watching uh, The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, a Dungeons and Dragons inspired cooking show where I first make a um, Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop inspired snack and then work on painting a mini. Uh, though this, uh, this week is a little bit of a misnomer because I am vending tomorrow at Dad's Garage uh, Lobby Con, which is the little lobby convention they're hosting right before the performance that evening's performance of Wrath of Khan 2 which is a oh hey Abe it's good to see you here on time uh, yeah but Wrath of Khan 2 it is a musical inspired by geek conventions mostly Dragon Con um, the first Wrath of Khan was first air, uh, first shown in 2012 and this year is the premiere year of Wrath of Khan 2 into darkness so if you happen to be in the Atlanta area tomorrow and uh, want to head to their website to pick up some tickets um, the lobby con starts at 7 p.m. and I will be there uh, giving up free samples of my Cheeto sausage balls as well as my Bulbasaur bites and selling recipe cards so if you're in town and want to check that out come on by. Um, Dad's Garage is a fun little theater, a lot of improv comedy, and I can go on and on about that, and I just realized I have something on my computer chair, but that's okay, I'm not going to notice that. Uh, won't be there till Saturday. Oh, dang it, Abe, but um, that's sad to hear, but uh, I actually have all of next week off. It is, in fact, fall break for the school I work at, so I'm going to be working a lot on the blog, but I'll also just kind of be doing my thing and hanging out, so that should be good. Um, tonight's uh, episode, uh, as people who've been watching the show before know, I've been doing the 52 weeks of D&D challenge uh, set forth by uh, Rain Risa, uh, well, Rain Risa on Twitter. Uh, last week, or I guess last Friday, we did the challenge word of dwarf with some oyster and ham stuffed um, mushrooms inspired by Merle High Church from the Adventure Zone. This week, the challenge word is Urban Adventures. So at first I was thinking, are they referring to a modern setting? And then I realized, oh, okay, I'll just Google it and found out, no, I've been playing Urban Adventures of D&D for a very long time, uh, mostly in the form of the game Baldur's Gate. Uh, Urban Adventures is kind of the 3.5 uh, edition term towards any kind of adventures that takes pl take place in an urban setting. So you got to keep in mind, mostly instead of dungeons and dragons, you're dealing with um, alley, like uh, sewers <laughs> and dragons. Don't worry, I'm not making any kind of sewer-themed recipe. But I am kind of going a little bit with the waterways. I am going to be making a recipe inspired by water the Forgotten Realms campaign city of Waterdeep, which is a port city. And uh, what I'm making tonight is called Fleet's Wake Pasties. Fleet's Wake is the annual festival, which is kind of a tribute to the, sea, the evil sea goddess Umberly, and kind of hoping that she'll keep herself from trying to kill everyone who comes into port with her dangerous waves and sharks and all sorts of things. So uh, the last two days of Fleet's Wake is known as the Fair Seas Festival, which is celebrated with um, basically feasting on tons and tons of seafood. So the, the reason why I'm taking this into consideration is that for the whole concept of uh, urban adventures, um, it's not like a standard tavern that you're going to find just along the roadways in Dungeons and Dragons. Cities, especially during medie uh, European medieval settings, had very limited access to, uh, to resources, especially various crops and um, a lot of meat items. In fact, the majority of meat that would be served would either be preserved, like salt pork or salt fish, or it would only be presented like such as fowl to um, nobles that would come by who would pay, be able to pay for essentially what was the tavern owner's egg layer. Uh, peasants rarely ate chicken. The uh, thing is, the whole chicken production and practically everything is more of a modern concept and it has a lot to do with the whole uh, chicken in every pot mentality. Um, 
I want to say probably post-war mentality of where we're going to be so prosperous that every family can afford to eat chicken. And now it's everywhere. But back then, chickens were very expensive to raise. And also, they are the egg layers. Eggs are the, kind of the perfect protein because they're constantly being produced. They're, for the most part, low calorie and very high in a lot of nutrients that we eat. And whenever you kill a chicken, you are basically taking away a good source of your income. So, um, needless to say, even though I kind of am saying it, we are not using chicken in this recipe. But Waterdeep, being a port city and as well as a um, port city <laughs> and during a festival season, I'm basically trying to make a pa uh, kind of meat pie that would be featured during the Fair Seas Festival with this abundance of seafood. So um, I'll be using uh, oysters and clams today. Um, the big reason why we're also using shellfish is that uh, oysters at the time were kind of considered how lobster were at the time, where essentially cockroaches of the sea. They were abundant, all you had to do was go down to the beach, scoop up some mud, and there's a good chance you're going to be picking up some oysters. So mostly the poor people ate oysters, which is interesting considering that these days it's considered a higher tier food. It's, it's more expensive. And I mean, part of that too is we're not usually located, not everyone's located next to a waterway. And also the, there's the whole concept of getting things fresh. Um, back then, however, everyone ate them just like lobster. So that's why we're going to be using that. We're also going to be using some salmon too. And the thing is, since the majority of these products are canned in their own water that they've been boiled in, we're going to be using that as sort of a fit, uh, stock to make a white wine butter sauce that's going to be going into our pies, as well as uh, some fresh dill that I picked up the other day. There we are, you can see my arm. And since everyone had access to salt pork, we are gonna be putting some bacon in there as well. Also because everything's better with bacon. Um, and also since you also wanna think of various vegetables that would, you know, had the words on my brain right then, but now they're gone. You wanted vegetables that would keep for a long time. That's why you would have various root vegetables, such as potatoes. Uh, though, if you're going to buy medieval European standards, the whole um, russet potato or golden potato that you would normally see in a gro American grocery store, not a thing. However, this is Dungeons and & Dragons, and being a fantasy setting, we can eat some potatoes. Then. Onions. Onions are also a very popular root vegetable and would often just, you know, last forever. And that is the biggest thing. What can you have last forever and buy in great quantity? And also grows in great, great quantity. A uh, thing we're also going to have with those vegetables we're going to have in the bottom. So the bacon fat that we're going to have around it and sort of on top to keep the filling in place is going to seep out that delicious bacon fat into our vegetables as the pies are cooking. Um, we're going to be using a crust um, called a hot water crust, which you may not have heard of. It's normally used for um, sort of pasties and English pie, uh, medieval style pies, and where the pie dough acts more of a serving vessel than that kind of flaky melt in your mouth crust that you're used to with puff pastry. The advantage to this is that if you have warm hands like I do and are living in Georgia like I am, with our 90 some degree weather, yay! Um, using cold butter pie crust is not fun, especially with the application that we're gonna be using with it tonight. So now that I've blathered on and on, um, we're going to get started. So, right, first we're gonna need to do a little bit of prep. So I'll switch to our prep cam and hope that I actually set it right. And, Kind of a quick lesson on how to hold a knife. Here we 
me draw that up a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Actually, that might be hard to see, so I'm going to get a colored cutting board out so you can see that a little better. And that also means less cleanup for me later. Yay! So, okay, so a quick lesson on how to hold a knife properly. Index finger you want up against the blade like that. Thumb here. And then curl your fingers around comfortably around the handle. Um, of course, do this with your dominant hand. So if you were left-handed, it'd be like that. I am not left-handed. I just look like it right now. So we're just going to be doing that. Okay. And we're just going to be doing some simple sl um, half slices here. So I'm just going to cut this lengthwise first. And then kind of slice this thinly in about... I want to say about quarter inch thick slices because while we want this to soak up the bacon fat we don't want it so thick that it kind of doesn't cook completely when we cook these pies. And as you can see one potato does go a long way. So as you see I'm cutting it on a bias. Feel free to cut it straight. I just like doing this because it looks pretty. Okay. So I'm just going to grab some prep bowls to put these in when I'm done slicing them. That way I don't have all these wet potato pieces just flying all over my board. So, potatoes, yay. Next up, onion. So first I'm just gonna cut that outer end off of it and then cut it in half. That way I'm able to peel it fairly easily. Now, I will say if you're the person, kind of person who cries when you cut onions, well, um, I would say just keep practicing your knife skills because the thing is, onions release more of their oils the more cellular cell damage that it has. Is that a yellow, white, or Vidalia onion? This is a yellow onion. Um, I have this because it's cheap. I mean, feel free to use a Vidalia onion instead if you prefer them or if they happen to be on sale. Uh, it would add, it'd add a little bit of sweetness and will go well with your shellfish. Um, however, yellow onions are just as good and are usually less expensive. White onion I would not suggest because they are very strong in flavor to begin with. Um, usually when you want white onion, you don't really want it for anything other than maybe pico de gallo or something that's going to be cooked pretty darn well. But that and white onions are just more expensive, so why would you even bother when you're cooking something to heck and back unless you're trying to make a authentic pico de gallo. And the reason why I say pico de gallo is that with the tomatoes, white onion, and cilantro, it's supposed to represent the red, white, and green and the Mexican flag. There's your fun fact about food today. Well, one of them. So, the reason why I am keeping this peel is that I like to make my own stock with vegetable peelings. Now the only thing I probably, I, I don't really use in my homemade stock is potato slice, uh, potato peelings, just because there's so much star uh, starch in it and it doesn't really contribute much flavor wise. As you know, say onion peels or garlic peels. So, just going to get that. Now this is a freezer bag that I have what's left of a rotisserie chicken in. Keep your carcasses and freeze them. 
Once the bag is full of vegetable scraps and chicken bones, I throw it in a crock pot with about, well, I just fill it with water and as well as my trimmings. Put it on low for eight hours. And afterwards, you um, just let it refrigerate overnight to uh, solidify any of the fats on top. Strain it all out, and you'll have about 10 to 12 cups of homemade stock afterwards. So, um, I'm one of those people who cannot stand waste in the kitchen, which is also why we're using the water from our canned oysters and clams tonight as a stock, because, you know, waste not, want not, and it also adds a boost of flavor to the sauce that we're going to have inside of our pies. So I was going to julienne this, because that's what I'm used to doing, but um, for this application, I am not, because I'm going to be doing a layer of potatoes and onions on the bottom of each pie. So I want to make some fairly slim, slim slices that I can then kind of overlap and layer on the bottom to absorb all that nice bacon fat that we're going to have on our filling. So. We'll just keep the buds to the root ends too. And you notice I didn't take the root end off of our onion before cutting it. Now, uh, that's a little bit more important if you're doing a julienne or a standard dice because the bud end is what keeps the onion together and from falling apart as you're slicing it. But once you have it left over, you can just put it into your stock bag and since none of the solids in your stock bag are making it into your broth anyway, it's okay to have some of the less desirable things, like the little, you know, rooty end of the root end. I mean, I could say hairy end. Oh, wait, I just did. Doesn't really sound all that appetizing, does it? But no, it's, it's okay, because crazy enough, some of the most disgusting processes are involved in making something delicious. So, if you're squeamish, either learn how to cook without raw proteins, or, you know, vegetable ends, or, you know, get used to it. I know it sounds really kind of insensitive, but the more that you work with something, the less sensitized you are to it. Unless, you know, it's something you're allergic to. Please don't work with things you're allergic to. Right. Do, 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 do. I've got my vegetables sliced, so now I want to slice up some of that fresh dill that I'm going to be throwing into that sauce. Do, 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 do. Where are you? Purple. Okay. This I can be a little less ceremonious with. Just gonna. Where did I put those root ends? Oh, right, I put it in the freezer bag. Shows you what my brain is today. Okay, so you're probably not gonna need more than probably about a tablespoon's worth. So I'm just gonna cut about. Let's go with these ends. Well, actually, no, I'm going to go with the, the fronds instead because these will get wiltier faster on me. Well, these can handle a few more days. And also if I, oh, uh, no, that can be thrown out. Or it's not bag. So I'm just going to finally chop that. And, I mean, that's good to go. That is roughly a tablespoon. Another thing you'll uh, do notice once you do a lot more cooking, it becomes easier to eyeball amounts. I mean, by all means, feel free to use measuring spoons, but um, beforehand, in fact, I highly recommend it. But, you know, if you don't have, I mean, if you're used to seeing how much is what, it should work out unless you're baking things. Um, the case with the crust, you will actually need to measure out with a measuring cup, blah, blah, blah. 
you get it. So, next up I need to chop my proteins. Now what I want to do with this is I want to drain the water that I have in these cans. Never really did like dill. It's it's a taste that not everyone likes. Um, feel free to use uh, other herbs in there if you prefer other ones. Like um, I'm also going to add a bit of dried thyme once I figure out where it went in my arsenal of spices. Ah, no, here it is. Some dried thyme. I'm just going to see, that's about a tablespoon of fresh dill chopped. And let's go with a teaspoon of dried dill. Sorry, dried um, thyme. It's a half tablespoon. Here we are. Teaspoons, however, I'm a little. Actually, no, that's. Mm, half a teaspoon should work. Ain't nobody get. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, Thyme is also a bit of a sweeter herb that goes really well with butter and white wine, which we're going to be using both in the little sauce I'm making up with this stuff. So just gonna mark that half a teaspoon of dried thyme. And so I'm adding that at the same time, ah, time as the dill, I'm just going to put that in the same bowl. So, right. Protein. Um, so I need to open that. And the can opener's out, which means in just about 20 seconds, you're going to be hearing the cacophony of my three cats going nuts. Not over the sound of a can opener, not just over the sound of a can opener, but over the smell of fish. Is that working? Did my can opener break? Oh, this is going to be a really bad episode if my can opener is broken. Nope, it's working. Woohoo! So do you prefer canned scallops over frozen or clams? Um, I've never actually seen uh, canned scallops. Um, I will admit I actually prefer working with canned stuff, unless it's, I mean, fresh scallops, canned clams. I know they look gross, but the flavor's there. I mean, partially because I am one of those cooks that has an issue with cooking things when I actually intend to cook them. The reason why I tend to go with canned for shellfish often, unless it's scallops, because then I can freeze them, is that um, <laughs> you kind of need them super fresh, and you kind of need to cook them pretty much immediately when you get them. So it's just, I my schedule is too variable to work with clams, with fresh clams. However, uh, for, oh, haha, -ha. thought that you could spill now, didn't you? Didn't you? Haha, -ha. sorry. Um, but yeah, since my schedule is all over the place, especially since I work full time, well not for time, part time, but everything else, everything else I do is kind of a full-time job. But also, like I said, the advantage of working with canned shellfish in this particular usage is that that's about a cup of um, like shellfish water that I can use as a stock and base for my sauce. So, oh, and I see Ginger's here. She hasn't started meowing at me yet, probably once the salmon's opened. Let's 
see, how do you think adding mushrooms would go into this recipe? Uh, it would go pretty well, though you would probably have to pull back on one of the ingredients so your stuffing is not overfilled. So I guess for example, um, I'm working with a 10 ounce cam, uh, can of whole baby clams and a eight ounce can of whole oysters. You might have to go for smaller cans of those to have it fit or I guess maybe leave out the onions. Um, because like I said, or I would guess maybe even make a one and a half batch of this, um, of the dough, of the pie dough for it. So keep that in mind. Anytime you add something to a recipe that has to be a, that's gonna be a filling of something, you're gonna have to do less of another particular ingredient or make more of the dough that, case, that encases it. So yeah, that's about uh, 10 ounce. Just have to get that written. 10 ounce and eight ounce. Oh wait. Yeah, I did not have time to actually type everything out. And how much is the salmon? Salmon is six ounce. Before doing this. But yeah, mushrooms would work extremely well uh, with this recipe. Uh, Case Illustrated, last week's recipe for beach dwarf bites inspired by the Adventure Zone. I did mushrooms stuffed with... Um, sorry, my brain just kind of froze on me for a little second, for a second or so. Um, it was mushrooms stuffed with a mix of ham, smoked oysters, blue cheese and topped with oh and panko breadcrumbs and then topped with um, pineapple and seaweed salad it was phenomenally good um, so yeah keep that in mind mushrooms and oysters go very well together especially if they're smoked oysters so yeah, uh, I ended up with about a cup of liquid here. So that I'm going to just set over here. And I'm going to water that down with about a half a cup of white wine. We'll see how we do after a quarter cup. Oh, hi. Meows, meows. Told you. What is it, my princess? Mwah. What is it? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are you so sad that you smell all the fishy stuff and you're not getting any? Is that right, my little girl? <laughs> and now I have Moosey meowing at me. Hi, Moose. Hey, princess. Okay, Ginger. This is Ginger. Okay. And hey, Moose. And this is Moosey. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. You're so good. Such a good boy. Okay, kitties, you heard the can opener and you smell the fish, so I'm going to give you some treats, okay? If I give you treats, maybe you'll stop trying to get what I'm cooking. And in Ginger's case, maybe stop trying to trip me in my own kitchen. Okay, there you go. There's one and there's two. There you go. Let's see, here are all the motors. Oh gosh. Oh, uh, Ginger. Oh, no, uh, I already gave you treats. Move, move. Move, princess. Why? No, I gave you a treat. You're not supposed to try to trip me now. And now I am covered in cat fur. Cool route. Oh, no, I, I already gave you a treat. I know you can smell the fishies, but the fishies aren't for you, honey. Oh, that's what it's like to have children. Um, are you coming out Saturday with everyone? I didn't know there was a meetup Saturday. Um, I would love to come out Saturday, I think. I'm pretty sure my schedule's free. So, 
yeah, I would love to come out Saturday and hang out. Um, though, I've got a feeling probably what happened was that James probably assumed that I already knew from uh, the whole Twitter thread and all that. So that's what I'm guessing probably happened. Because, um, yeah, I ended up having, like, uh, not only uh, James Diver hanging out the other night, uh, I had basically the majority of the cast of Flipping the Table at my house uh, last Friday evening. Uh, when I had about um, three hours of sleep, the reason why I had three hours of sleep is I was playing... Uh, I was playing Shroud of the Avatar for about six straight hours. Um, yeah, it was nuts. But I finally made affiliate, so ha ha ha! I'm okay with that. Um, ooh. You were lurking. Yeah, it was a fun run, but oh my god, I was so exhausted. Luckily, Fridays, my boss, like, no one is in my office on Fridays except for me. So I have the whole place to myself, and I can be as awake or not awake as I want. <laughs> right. I should chop these up before my cats go even crazier. Okay. Those, for the most part, looked a bit, look chopped up. Well, not really chopped up so much as smaller. So I'm just going to give it more of a rough chop to make it a little easier to mix. I mean, the thing is, this stuff's already cooked. Oh, there we are. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Obi Quiet. How are you doing? I see a kitty on that emoji. So yay, kitties. Um, goodness. But yeah, got some whole clams here. Just giving them a chop. Hi, hi, Ginger. Okay, fine, you can have some clam. Okay, there you go. Make good decisions. I know you won't. Move, 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 honey, move, move. I need to open my cabinet. So, clams into the mixing bowl. Ah. Okay, you can have a little bit more clam. I am such a good influence on my fur children. There you go. There you go. Here's my princess. I'm not kidding when I say she's a princess. Spoiled kitty is spoiled. No freaking kidding. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I've got my canned oysters, which look a little less cooked, but are actually cooked. Yes, I know oysters look like something else that I... Hey, I'm trying to keep it a PG-13 stream. Trying. We'll see how long that lasts. So I'm just going to give those a rough chop. Hi, Moose. How are you, pretty cat? Would you like some clams as well, since I already offered it to your sister? Ah, wake up, screen. Those look interesting. Yeah, yeah, oysters tend to be like that. They um, tend to look like um, certain part of the anatomy, kind of, especially when fresh. Um, like I said, I miss fresh oysters. I freaking love fresh oysters. Just trying to find a place that serves them and serves them well is difficult. Like, there was a... God, there was a place in Brookhaven that had a ho oyster happy hour on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. God, I miss that place. Um, it was about... See, throw them on a saltine with some hot sauce. Oh, oh. Okay, after I'm assaulting with some hot sauce. I don't have any saltines right now, though I do have hot sauce. I kind of want this to sort of measure up. But anyway, mixing bowl with shellfish. Yeah, get that into the bowl. Okay, cool. 
And since I don't really need that cutting board anymore, give that a rinse. Okay. All right, and give this a quick wash. And I'm not going to need it again until a little later. So tonight's stream, not only am I making this dish inspired by the Forgotten Realm City of Waterdeep, I'm also going to be making up the food I'm going to be serving uh, over at Lobby Con at Dad's Garage tomorrow night, which, once again, that's going to be Cheeto sausage balls and what I call Bulbasaur bites, which is, oh hi, um, crostini, uh, which are slices of toast topped with spinach and sauteed spinach and Thai basil and pearl onions. It's say you also don't have fresh oysters. I know. Forgive me, I lived in a landlocked city. So I'm just gonna, yeah, no, I'm okay with that for now. Okay. You and me both, yes. But, oh man, there's this oyster place in town Brookhaven. Did about dozen oysters for about five bucks during oyster happy hour. It was so good. Oh my god. Alright, Moose, you want would you like some clams? Come here, Moose. There you go. Not for you, Ginger. You already had plenty of clams. Let's see. I worry about the sushi places up here sometimes. And then eat it anyway. Well, with sushi, you at least get for the most part, flash frozen fish. And, I mean, you can always kind of tell whether the fish is fresh by its smell and its taste, obviously. Um, but I'm also kind of lucky living in Atlanta. Okay. Just gonna kind of mix that all together. And listen to my cats go berserk behind me, too. Oh, man, this smells good. Okay. So, I'm just going to put that to the side. Yes, I know. You're such a precious kitty. You deserves all the finest things in the world. Yes, and you are, too, Moosey. But I already gave you treats and clams. Or is it you smell the salmon? Probably smell the salmon. Oh, squeaks! <laughs> oh. So, Ginger, as you saw, is a tiny little cat with a tiny little squeak. She's about 20 years old. Moosey, well, I'm not sure how old he is, but he is a mama's boy. And a lot of times he'll notice the attention Ginger's getting and and try to imitate her. Hi, Schrody. You're, you're late to the party. Oh, goodness. Um, let's see. I could go for a tuna sandwich now. Thanks. Sorry, not sorry? Hey, at least you like tuna. I think I'm the only one in my household who actually likes canned tuna. Well, no. Scratch that. Me and all three of my cats. I know, you're so precious. Hey, babe. Carter. Can you help run some interference? I've got all three of them here. Uh, the only human in the house. Can you run interference? I've got all three of them here. Oh. Uh, I've already given you like two pieces of clam and a treat. What more do you want from me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Carter wrangled the case. <laughs> that was my follower who said that, not me. Um, that was my follower who said that, not me. <laughs> uh, yeah, Carter wrangled the kitties. <laughs> And can you give Schrody a treat? Well, I'll get him one. 
I'll get him one when he actually makes it back to the kitchen, because then I just tempt fate. Thanks, Carter. We appreciate your assistance. <laughs> right. I was doing things. Yes. Yes. Sauce. So, um, I'm just going to... Do, 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 do. I was going to do things. Yes. I was going to go to my stovetop cam. My hideously gross stovetop that I need to clean. And find... saucepan, which I'm first going to heat up, turn the vent on a little low so you can still hear me, and next, oh hi kids, you're back, butter, yes, so I'm going to be making a roux, which is the term for a combination of fat and starch that's going to be as a, act as a thickener as well as a flavor carrier to my sauce. See, that's a big box of wine for one little recipe. Is this going to be a splash for the food glass for me, a splash for the food glass for me kind of situation? I see you have been paying attention to my show, Abe. Um, okay, so I'm just going to take about two tablespoons of unsalted butter here. And... Add that to my pan. Uh, I might, well, let's do three tablespoons, make it nice and buttery. And just allow that to melt. Next up, I'm gonna get about three tablespoons of all purpose flour. prep dish. So, eh, eh, get back here. Um, eh, de, and toi. Remainder of this butter in the fridge. Oh, that smells heavenly. Okay, so next, I'm just, like I said, I'm waiting for this butter to melt. But, oh man, I'll set that a little lower. It's already kind of foaming on me. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add my flour gradually while whisking. And the thing is, part of the reason why I do this is that by smoothing it out in a fat like this, it prevents me from getting a lumpy sauce. Because I am whisking this until it is a uniform consistency. And I'm just going to let that cook a little bit until I am able to get my wine into my thing of fish juice. All right. And also while it's foaming like that, I'm going to go ahead and add my herbs. So that is a half teaspoon of dried thyme and a tablespoon of fresh dill. So I'm just going to first whisk that in to kind of activate the oils that are in those herbs. Have it spread throughout the butter. Okay. Now I'm just going to Pour this in while whisking. And let that 
come to a boil and then simmer for a while to thicken. I'm not going to need that much sauce. I might, but I still want it to thicken some as more of a gravy than a just broth. Right, so occurs to me that I need to get the stuff for my crust going. So next up, we want to work with about four cups of all-purpose flour. Fish juice, that does not sound tasty. I know, but that's what it is. Okay, are you gonna thicken up for me? Just maybe. Maybe, possibly. So kind of put them in a higher temperature to get that going. Do, 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 do. I need more wine. I already have some wine, but I kind of need a little bit more. Alrighty. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Yes, indeed, oh, be quiet. <laughs> mm. I feel like every time I say your screen name, I'm actually kind of telling you to shut up. But uh, I'm not trying to. Yet. Nah. Nah, dude, we're good. And I think, um, for those who are wondering, Obi Quiet is um, also a friend of mine. He's in my Star Wars tabletop game. And I will not give his name out unless he wants me to. So, why did I put that whisk away? Ugh, I'm gonna need a clean whisk. Okay, that's thickening up some. Eh, eh. I'm gonna switch cam so you can see what I'm doing. Is Obi the one whose mini you worked on with the horns? Um, no, it was the uh, calf armor one, so the cat person. Well, the one with the horns is his wife's character, uh, Katra. Which, I need to remake those horns. But yeah, as you see, the sauce is definitely thickening up. Oh, that's looking good. I'm just gonna turn down the heat just a wee bit. I might give that a taste because it may or may not need salt. I was wondering why everyone was picking on me. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely going to need some salt. And probably a bit of acid, too. So, I'm going to add just a wee bit more white wine for that acid portion. Though, I'd rather add some white wine vinegar but I also don't want to add more ingredients for you guys to buy. So, do, 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 salt. Here we are. Just add a nice fat pinch of salt. And another. Kosher salt, you can be a little bit more liberal with salting things because it, it's shape has it dissolved pretty easily, and its salinity is much less than that of, say, table salt. Mmm, yeah. Much better. Okay. Alright, well that is looking, well, it is looking and tasting perfect. It's nice and thickened. So what I'm gonna do now, switch back to my prep cam, bring back that fish, fish mixture, and pour in a generous amount of my sauce. I'm just going to mix that in. And that's probably enough. Yeah. Now, you see, I'm I have a ton of sauce left, it's still kind of steaming, um, but that's okay because I can just have this be as part of a 
dipping sauce if you want to use that for your pies. Or um, you can hold on to it, put it into a Tupperware, and have it as pasta sauce later on in the week, which I think that's what I'm going to do. I admit I wasn't really expecting that much liquid out of these cans. I know I should have, but I didn't. So, waste not, want not. So, it's just going to get going there for now. And good, I did actually turn my stove top off. Wondering about that for a second. All right. Good. Turn this off. Ah. That's off. Okay. Right then. So I'm just going to let that sit and soak up the liquid. Do its thing. Oh, I'm tempted to just throw this in the fridge to let it set a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I might as well take out some of the other things I have in here that I'm going to be also ah, cooking with tonight. Oh, wow, that Tupperware actually stayed sealed. Excellent. I did mention I was spending for uh, Dad's garage tomorrow. Hi, Ginger. Move, please. I know you're still hoping for some fishy stuff, but maybe I'll make you a mini pie later. I've actually done that before, by the way. Uh, made a mini pie for my cats. Um, yes, I know it sounds cra uh, crazy cat lady, but hear me out. It was, uh, I'm part of this fandom food recipe blogger group called Fandom Foodies. And we do monthly link ups, which I will admit I haven't done in a good long while. Um, and one of the themes we had we called Manuary. Nan being the Japanese word for cat, we were celebrating um, cats in fictional settings like video games and stories and all that. And I decided to make a recipe inspired by uh, Dragon Age 2 um, and the cat Sir Pounce a lot. Um, I made basically a hand pie that his owner would probably share with him. Um, yeah. That's kind of what I'm basing the salt water crust or the hot water crust off of today. Um, it's a medieval style hand pie. Um, I was making using ingredients that cats are actually able to eat, but also humans will eat as well, like mackerel, cantaloupe, peas. It sounds gross, but it was delicious. And oh my gosh, Ginger tore into it like nobody's business. Mm. Right, so crust. Uh, for that, I will need to get another saucepan out. And to that, I will need to add, let's see, a cup of water. A cup of lard, which I'll get out in a second. See, I've got my four cups of all-purpose flour here. It calls for about um, two teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm just going to do kind of two pinches of kosher salt. That's roughly about a teaspoon. I mean, this you can be a little bit more flexible with. Right, so this I can put somewhere. I'll put over here because I might actually need it for one of the dishes I'm making later. It only has flour on it. As long as I, whatever I use with it includes flour, we are good. It's, yeah. Extra water. I do have a quarter cup thingy. No. Let's do eight cup and just count. All right. So, 
snow cap lard. It's usually stupidly cheap, about two bucks for one of these thingies. What is that? I don't know. Cool. What the heck is in here? Oh, it's fine as long as the lard's fine. It's also shelf stable when you buy it. I usually refrigerate it after using it. So, come on. I'm gonna need about a cup of this. So, let's go with a clean spoon. Yeah. Actually, I'm not even gonna bother with that. Use this for something else, it's only have water in it. Excuse me. Move, princess, move, move. Get this out of the way for now, so you can see what I'm doing. Alrighty, so it's about eighth of a cup. So there's one. Okay, okay, come on. Two. Now, granted, you can also use vegetable shortening for this if you prefer. It is a little bit more expensive and the dough will be softer and a little less easy to work with. But you generally want something with a full fat content, like say lard or bacon fat or duck fat also works. So that's three out of eight. Ah, ah, ah. Five. Six. Seven and eight. Now, I, for most of the time, whenever I do a medieval style pie or hand pie, I do use snow cap lard or vegetable shortening if I happen to be making a vegan recipe. So, there are quite a few recipes on my blog, thegluttonsgeek.com that also use this recipe. Something to keep in mind. Now, I've yet to try using gluten-free flour with it. I think I should be fine using, using it, since this is a pie crust as opposed to say, um, hello, um, what's it called? You know, a cake where you actually need that kind of reaction. What are we making? Okay, well, um, welcome pub rules to my Dungeons and Dragons inspired cooking show, Munchies and Minis. I, each week I first make a D&D &D or tabletop inspired snack and then work, to work on painting a mini. Though this episode I'm just doing all cooking three recipes. The first one is this week's recipe, which is inspired by the Forgotten Realms campaign setting city of Water, uh, Waterdeep with kind of a seafood hand pie um, inspired by the Fleet Week, sorry, the Fleet's Wake Festival, which is a kind of a sea goddess festival where they eat tons of seafood, get drunk, and give praise to the evil sea god, sea goddess Umberly, in hope that she will not kill everybody in various storms at sea or, you know, having various secret her followers come up and kill everybody. So um, that's what we're making. I've already made the filling with oysters, uh, clams, kind of a cream, kind of a butter sauce, and salmon. Um, I'm also going to be putting in some sliced potato and onion. I'm making a hot water crust right now, which is made of fat, um, which is in this case snow cap lard, 
and water. So I'm just gonna put that on my stove top right now to melt. And I'm also gonna finish off that whole mix with, like whole filling with bacon. So yeah, um, this was what I was supposed to be. Um, this is the show I was supposed to be streaming last Wednesday, but ended up um, dealing with a lot of family stuff. And then I was supposed to be doing it on Thursday, but I fell asleep for pretty much the whole day. So now we are actually back on schedule with it Friday evenings. Granted, it's half an hour later than I normally stream. Did you make the recipe uh, up yourself? Yes, actually. I run the nerdy food blog, thegluttonousgeek.com. That's where my handle comes from, in case you're wondering. Um, and yeah, that's actually why I got into streaming, was kind of as a way of doing sort of a supplemental video type stuff with my blog without having to do a lot of video editing. So, um, and I also wanted to do more tabletop inspired work so I could, you know, do more kind of gaming and food inspired panels at conventions. And then as you saw, I kind of got addicted to playing Shroud of the Avatar. So that's how you met me because my God, that game's addictive. Um, mm. Well, very creative, I could never do that. Um, well, thank you very much. It's, it's a lot of work, but I enjoy it. Um, I was an English major in college, so the way I look at this is kind of a sort of book report, but well, English essay, but through food. Because every, I mean, whenever you read a book or see any kind of I, stuff in video, like any kind of world building aspect in video games or uh, movies and whatnot, and if food's involved, it's kind of showing not only culture, but it can also show uh, details about the character. I mean, we, you kind of are what you eat, so um, we have a tendency to kind of, uh, our personalities do kind of almost coincide with what we actually take time to prepare for ourselves or order for ourselves. I mean, you can, sometimes you can be more adventurous and eat like, you know, various spices and everything that are unfamiliar with your culture. Or if you're a little bit more uh, timid, you might go for something that you were raised with, more than likely. Uh, I also try to think of the world building aspect of the environment these stories take place in. So we're talking about like what various ingredients you could find. Um, Funny thing about that, uh, and also bringing up the game Shroud of the Avatar, which for those uh, who are new to the channel and have never played this game, it is a free MMO, uh, MMO RPG. Uh, probably the nicest MMO community I have ever met in my entire life. Uh, I got into it because a friend of mine um, knows, well, has met uh, Lord British, Richard Garriott, in the past, and um, was wanting to work for the game at some point. And I'm like, well, you know, um, is there food in it? He's like, oh yeah, there's tons of stuff. So I was like, well, maybe I should play this game a bit before I, you know, make any recipes inspired by it. So I started playing and I got addicted. So what I'm thinking about doing every once in a while, like maybe a stream I'm gonna call Snack of the Avatar, where it's, uh, okay. I'm still kind of waiting for all of this fat to melt. So that's what's going on here. But trying to keep, I'm gonna need to kind of keep the water down a little low. And also a tip for working with hot water crust, you need to keep it warm. Just like with a cold, like a butter crust, you would need to keep the dough cold to have it malleable. In this particular case, it is the complete opposite. You need to keep that dough good and hot, otherwise it will dry up on you. So what I'm getting out right now is a baking dish, and I just put on some water to boil. Put that underneath my uh, stuff here. And it looks like, okay, yeah, 
my fat is all melted here and it's also starting to boil some. So now that it's doing that, turn my heat off, come back to my prep cam and pour it in directly in to my flour and salt mixture. So, as you can see, it's good and hot. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and mix this with a spatula instead of my hands. Cause it's, uh, it's a bit warm to handle at the moment. In the meantime, just have to check really quick what time. Okay, so I need to, as I'm shaping these, I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 325 degrees. Let's do that on convection so it goes a little faster. Okay, cool. Do you take requests? Dragon stew would be awesome. Yeah, I am I was thinking about that at some point, but um, part of it is also trying to figure out what meat would represent dragon in the game. Well, I mean, in real life. Now, there's this game called uh, Battle Chef Brigade. It's a platform game, it's a lot of fun, where it's this kind of modern fantasy world where it's plagued by monsters, and to hold back the monster population, there are, there's a brigade of uh, fighters that also are star cooks. So it, kind of picture it like it's uh, Final Fantasy meets Iron Chef, because they have these giant competitions to figure out who can join the ranks of the Battle Chef Brigade. So some friends and I did a couple of recipes Again, we were lucky to get in contact with the head of Trinket Studios, and he sent us all of the game art. And yeah, um, it's interesting because we kind of figured out what animals, what various um, real life equivalents to the monsters in the game were. Dragon, it was pork. So I ended up making this dragon meatball with Italian sausage and smoked sun-dried tomatoes. And, oh, it was so good. Um, based off of the chef Cesar, who is a dwarf. And apparently dwarven style cooking is Italian. Um, but the thing is, in Shroud of the Avatar, while yes, there are dragons, uh, there's also pigs. <laughs> so um, I guess, Maybe it could be like, it's like I imagine that dragons would probably be a bit stringy. I mean, well, it would probably be kind of similar texture to pork if not beef. Or you might even be able to get away with lamb or goat. I don't know. Um, the thing is, the lamb and goat it has, does have that whole flavor of being vegetable fed. So I'm guessing pork would also would also probably work for dragon in Shroud of the Avatar. But then you would incorporate um, kind of flavors that would coincide with their environment, like maybe uh, maybe some mushrooms for the whole cave sort of thing, where you taste a little bit like what it's been eating. Not that they say eat mu that, not that they eat mushrooms. They probably just eat things that also eat mushrooms. I don't know. Um, hold on, I just need to blow my nose for a second because it sounds gross. Yeah, and it would taste like lizard. But the thing is. Um, a big thing with my recipes, it's, I know it gives you kind of an excuse to go buy exotic meats, but when it comes down to it, I still have to have some accessibility as far as ingredients are concerned. So um, I noticed that it's a dragon haunch that is the meat butchered for dragon stew. 
and uh, my kettle just turned off so you can see what I'm about to do here. To keep my dough warm, I'm just going to pour a layer of hot water into this baking dish and set my mixing bowl on top to keep this dough nice and warm and to also kind of reheat it some. Yeah. Okay. But you also want to be careful because you're also working on top of a layer of very, very hot water. So I'm just going to press that into the bottom here. Now actually the first recipe I was thinking about doing for Shroud of the Avatar is the um, Dark Star Smoked Duck. Now, what I want to do for that is I still need to put together the um, stock pot smoker for it. But uh, whole duck that's been covered in salt and sugar and uh, and sugar. That uh, so see here. I'm since I'm going to be making six pies, I'm going to be dividing the dough into six portions with my spatula. They're roughly equal. There we go. I'm going to slide this slightly out of the way. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then use the fat drippings from it because the fat that you get from a duck is just heavenly. Uh, making a roux with that well, with cornstarch, so it's not all kind of cloudy like we saw with the gravy for tonight's pie. Um, but yeah, then making a red, a red wine sugar glaze to put on top of that smoked duck uh, with the duck fat so it gets that kind of earthy flavor mixed into it. So that should be pretty tasty. Mm. Okay, so, and my oven is at temp. Just going to get that back to regular bake. And I'm going to need a baking sheet. So, I'm just going to line that with some parchment paper, which I have down here. Of course, I have it down here. I can barely get to it. It's not large enough. Why is this in my cabinet? Useless. Not to worry, I have another roll of parchment paper down here. Hopefully. God, I hope there's enough in here. All right. There we go. Hold it down with that. Do, 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 do. Please stay warm for me, Mr. Doe. Sounds kind of dirty, I know. Okay, so. Just need to do a little bit more prep here. Like, find where the hell my kitchen shears went. Not to worry, we'll just use a steak knife. Bacon! So you take any direction from the end game ingredients. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm planning. That's what I am planning on doing. Um, it, I will admit it's a very interesting combination of ingredients because there seems to be like all these various cultures mixed into one. But I also noticed that um, we can't go entirely by earth cultures because, um, well, the peppers that we see in the game are jalapenos, which are very much a new world item. Okay, now I'm just gonna divide this filling, my fishy filling, into six portions with a fork. It's not perfect, but it'll do. 
All right, so you saw me do these six portions. So first I need to make a ball with one of them and then press out till I make a circle of about roughly six inch diameter. And this is why it's good to do work with your hands, just because it keeps it all nice and warm. Okay. So next, I need to take some potatoes and onions. And kind of line them up here. Step two. Then that fit about a sixth of that filling that we made earlier. And we're going to take a strip of bacon, try to sort of wrap it around there to keep it everything in place. And also, as the bacon cooks inside the pie, that all that fat is going to soak right into those potatoes and onions. So, let's see how we are. Let's see if I want to do top to that too. Yeah, let's do that. I may be putting too much bacon in this, but meh. All right, so now I'm just going to pull that over and hope it doesn't tear on me like it's doing right now. Yeah, might need to press that out a little bit more. Yeah, but you see the bacon is keeping it all kind of in one spot for me. So I'm just gonna press that out a little bit more, press some of that dough towards the edge there. That is the nice thing about hot water crust is that it is very, very malleable. And now as you see, I'm kind of pressing that to join with the dough down there. Now, I'm just going to cut this corner here to make it a little easier for me to twist. And also, so I have, and I'm just gonna kind of gently roll that crust together. Kind of a crimped edge. Okay, and now we have one pie that's going to stick to my table for me. Yay! Gah! Take a little bit of pie crust there and just kind of... This might have a little too much lard in it. I have the same issue when I use vegetable shortening where the pie crust is a little too malleable. It'll all bake out though. Okay, I might just bring this over here so it's, no, no. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. Okay. Next round of dough. No such thing as too much bacon. Truer words have not been spoken. And I'm just gonna put that little corner of the dough there into my bowl with the hot water to keep it nice and malleable for what I'm about to do to it later. So once again, to kind of press outward make a large circle. Okay. It's potatoes. I 
probably slice this a little thinner. four potatoes in the last one. There we are. Okay. And another sixth of that filling. Okay. Bacon! Yeah, behave, dang it. Because I told you to. I am your creator and you must behave me. I brought you into this world and I could take you out of it. Well, that's kind of the point, but you know. Okay. Yeah. Do as I say. Okay, come on. Yeah. Admittedly, this might not be the prettiest thing in the. Um, but that's okay. As long as it tastes good, right? Yep, I think I used a wee bit too much lard. Maybe if I have less of a journey for it to make, it won't fall on me so easily. Come on. Come on. Uh, spatula, come to my aid. Almighty oh, spatula, here we are. Maybe this will work. Spatulas are sticky. Other spatula. Ha ha. Nope. This is also sticky. bake or fry. They will bake. Currently my oven is preheated to about 325 degrees Fahrenheit. So I need to get six of these. All right. It's three out of six.
I do have quite a bit of excess dough in this section. Bacon, mm, yes, everything is better with bacon. I think we've all come to that to consensus. Okay, I'm just gonna seal up that edge some with some of this excess dough here. Wells around here. Okay. saving someone's extra dough because I'm going to try to... Ever had bacon ice cream? I have not. Um, I would like to try it at some point though because I have had sugar cookies with bacon in them before. Super tasty. Especially if you add some rosemary and pine nuts. Come on. Seal up for me. Okay, so admittedly this is not the nicest looking pie out of the bunch, but that's okay because I'm sure it will be delicious. So, but I imagine bacon ice cream probably tastes freaking amazing because anytime you combine salt and fat, it's just a magical combination. Hi, Ginger. I see that you're back. Ginger's my cat, by the way, for those just joining us. Oh, goodness. I should probably wash my hands before and after handling it. I'm sure that you want to see my pet cat. He is looking furiously for the clam and oyster filling I have. Ginger, come here, princess. No. Are you my pretty cook? Oh, hi. Come there. Come there. You come meet my followers. What else is in the pie? Uh, I've got a mix of, let's see, clams, oysters, salmon, with a kind of white wine butter sauce mixed in. Uh, as you see, we have bacon, onion, and potato as well. So that's what's going into these hand pies, inspired by um, the City of Waterdeep from the Forgotten Realms campaign of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I'm also going to be cooking two other things tonight because I'm vending at Dad's Garage tomorrow evening. They're having kind of a geeky convention right before. I love D&D. Excellent. Well, you're coming to the right place. This is my weekly cooking show, Munchies and Minis, where I first make a Dungeons and Dragons or a uh, tabletop inspired snack and then work on painting a mini. Though tonight, since I've got a lot of cooking to do, I'm only cooking. Um, but yeah, I've been doing the 52 weeks of D&D challenge. It's a fan art challenge that Rain Risa on Twitter uh, started earlier this year. I am way behind as far as timing is concerned. Uh, yeah, that's... she. Would you believe that cat's about 20 years old, by the way? Um, She's my baby princess, and I love her, but she oftentimes tries to trip me up in the kitchen. Especially if she smells anything that she likes, and she likes pretty much everything. Um, so you play the old way or online? Um, I play whatever way I can. Um, I started out uh, being interested in the series with the Baldur's Gate uh, series, computer game series, with, which was, of course, second edition. And then got into 3.5 in high school. Um, tried fourth edition, didn't really like it as much. And um, I got back in fifth edition when I started listening to some Dungeons and Dragons podcasts, uh, starting with the Adventure Zone, and then listening to local D&D podcasts here in Atlanta, North by Northwest. Uh, another good one is Loot and Dagger and Stellar Arcanum. But yeah, um, let's see, the only tabletop game that I'm consistently in right now is a Witch Girls campaign run over on Little Red Dot's channel. But every once in a while I get to head over to my husband's game group and play some one-shots with them. 
trouble with running a blog is that it is kind of a full-time job. So um, I'm not always able to get into a regular game schedule. I play D&D &D and WoW, of course. I used to play WoW. Um, back when I had a crappy internet connection and data cap and all that. Um, but once again, I was just so busy doing a billion other things that it kind of sort of became a full-time job to get my money's worth out of my subscription. So that's kind of why I stopped uh, playing WoW. Though I have been, uh, let's see, AOL. Oh, LOL, I played WoW for a long time. <laughs> yeah, um, now that I've got an amazing internet connection, yay, AT&T Fiber is now in town, I'm so happy. Um, yeah, I've gotten to play Shroud of the Avatar, which is a free MMO, which probably is the nicest, like as I was saying earlier, the nicest community of gamers, I've, like MMO players I've ever met. So um, if you want to check that out, I highly suggest you do. Uh, I might be streaming tomorrow evening, actually, uh, playing that. Probably just going to be do a lot of, um, it's like you can play free now with your gold. Oh, I did not know that. Um, so, that's good to know. Uh, WoW Classic just came out. I did hear about that. Now, um, goodness, um, God, it's been so long since I played World of Warcraft. Um, I just remember it being frustrated how long it took me to get a mount because it took forever to travel anywhere. Um, so yeah, I might have to give that another look. Maybe I'll stream that to see how well I remember it. That was pretty funny because a friend of mine's a writer for, uh, let's see, Geek and Sundry and a number of other kind of nerdy publications. And I remember him kind of sort of laughing when the new, when the WoW Classic came out when a lot of new players didn't realize just how good they have it now. <laughs> how crappy it used to be in comparison um so yeah we kind of had to laugh at that um it's like no mount still the same no mount a long walk yep uh that's why i promise i don't work for shroud of the avatar i one of the reasons why i like that game so much is that it is stupidly fast to tra uh, travel to anywhere because they have of course they have the various gaming regions but once you exit the area, you can get to a larger world map section. Let's add a little bit more onion in there. A larger world map section that you can just run along to, like somewhere that's on the other um, other side of the continent, with about within about five minutes. Um, so yeah. Getting enough gold and wow to pay for the month can get challenging as they keep changing sources, plus the cost fluctuates. Noted. Started playing Ultima online. Um, interesting enough, the guy who created the Ultima series created Shroud of the Avatar. Uh, Richard Garriott, i.e. Lord British. Um, so, and it's free. Um, sorry, I'm, I've gotten addicted to this game, so you'll probably hear me singing its praises quite a bit. Um, yeah, and the crafting system's kind of fun to deal, uh, learn as well. Free is good, yes. It is free, I mean, and you can even get your own house for free. You know, you just have to play the first couple of quests and you get a deed to your own lot, which is pretty cool. Which I've been learning how to do all the crafting things so I can make furniture for it. Which I'm so proud of myself. I made a couch. It's like large, almost larger than my uh, living room in my lot, but I made a couch. I know it's such a big accomplishment. Let's see, Swodar is free too. Um, what is Swodar? 
Is that Star the Star Wars MMO? I am so out of touch. Yeah, yeah, I have a. It did look interesting to me. Um, so I'm playing a tabletop Star Wars game right now with my friends. Which, actually, one of our players, I'm not sure if he's still watching or not, but uh, Star Wars Old Republic, awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, we're playing a Star Wars tabletop game right now. It kind of takes place with the Old Republic. Uh, back when everything was in disarray, where the Jedi pretty much were kind of desperate to bring in numbers and all that. But yeah, I might, and RuneScape was good. Never played. Um, see, do I have enough room for all six of these pies? I think I do. Just barely, but I do. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of tempted to put together a cosplay for my character, this upcoming Dragon Con. She's a Zeltron, a smuggler, well, scoundrel type, and who's also force sensitive. Considering I got myself a lightsaber or two Dragon Cons ago, and I've still yet to actually bring it to con as part of the costume. The only thing is that then I have to deal with body paint, and I hate dealing with body paint. But that food looks good, but I can't eat seafood. Well, um,. I'm going to be making uh, two other recipes shortly as soon as I get the stuff in the oven, which will also, it looks like I have two more pies to form, so that should also be shortly. Um, yeah, uh, there's a theater company here in Atlanta called Dad's Garage. It's a comedy improv theater company, but they also do full stage productions as well. And they have a musical called Wrath of Khan. The first one was written back in 2012, and you can, if you're, if you've ever been to Dragon Con, it's basically Dragon Con the musical. Um, but I was in Atlanta last week before I flew to Dallas. Well, uh, if you're ever in town again, check out Dad's Garage. I know that they also have a show of uh, improvised Dungeons and Dragons that I think they're going to be starting the run up soon, but it's a yearly thing now. Uh, also, if you're a fan of Archer, um, Lucky Yates and Amber, Na Amber Nash are also cast regular cast members at Dad's Garage, and sometimes they're also on Improvised D&D. Uh, also, if you are a fan of the, God, what's it called, Mass Effect series, Mark Mir sometimes comes out to DM the game of Improvised Dungeons and Dragons. So, it's a fun show. I highly recommend it. Um, and my good friend uh, Chelsea, i.e. Little Red Dot here on Twitter, is the marketing director for Dad's Garage. But yeah, the uh, thing is, the sequel to Wrath of Khan is playing right now. And they're having tomorrow what they're calling Lobby Con, where they're bringing a bunch of local cosplayers and other kind of nerdy businesses and whatnot to be vendors and kind of a little mini, mini convention before the show starts. Um, and so I'll be giving away free samples of two of my recipes. Uh, one's going to be a Cheeto sausage ball, which I'm about to going to start making as soon as I am done putting, uh, forming these and putting them into the oven. Uh, if you've never had sausage balls before, they're kind of a southern dish made with sausage, bisquick, and cheese. I'm also including Cheetos in there and beer brats. Um, they do that stuff up here in Ohio. Oh, cool. I've got a friend up in Ohio, too. Um, let's see here. And I'm also going to be making what I call Bulbasaur Bites. It's a recipe I did a while ago where it's little crostini, which are little slices of toast with stuff on it. Um, I'm going to be sauteing spinach and Thai basil together with a bit of 
sesame oil and then topping it with some pearl onions that have been cooked in that mix of soy sauce and mirin. And it is phenomenally good. I was kind of going for stuff that I can transport easily, but also things that don't cost that much money to produce in large quantities. Now a single batch of the sausage balls makes about 36 to 42 pieces. While I'm gonna be doing a triple batch of the Bulbasaur bites because it's actually not all that expensive to produce in triplicate. That and I can do all the components. It's like you ever make creamy ground beef gravy? Um, I have not yet. Um, oh, sorry for the cap. Oh, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. Uh, I have not yet, though um, I've made, well, uh, not a, a ground beef gravy but I have made gravies to go along with uh, beef roasts. Like, um, for example, I am a huge Dresden Files fan. I don't know if you read that book series at all, but it's uh, urban fantasy, takes place in Chicago, uh, about a modern day wizard. And one of the things that he has to deal with is that Halloween is a very powerful time where anything can change. I mean, immortals can be killed on certain dates like Halloween. So it's often referred to as Dark Hollow. And I figure that Chicago's supernatural community probably wants to kind of hunker down where, it's, um, where they're protected and have something comforting to eat while they wait for the wild hunt to pass over. So I made a beer ro uh, slow roast and then thicken the gravy up. So I think it was a beer and beef stock um, roast. And then thicken the gravy up with, uh, I, think, I think I used mashed potatoes flakes for that. It was, pretty, it was really good. Um, and another kind of thick gravy I did, uh, I, when Game of Thrones was still playing, I, uh, I did a premiere feast every year called Thronesgiving. And this last year, well, this, the final season's theme was who's left. So I made a pork roast inspired by Jon Snow because he has, I mean, spoilers, kind of the mix of Targaryen and Stark um, ancestry. It's about, I want to say three, no, four pork tenderloins. Um, up to temperature with my sous vide machine, and then I seared it with a cast iron skillet. And then used the juices that was co were collected in the bags from doing the sous vide. And I managed to reduce that with some sliced leeks and, uh, what was it? I think I used a Trappist ale, like a nice uh, Belgian beer. The cheap stuff though, from Trader Joe's and made a beer and pork juice based gravy and thickened it with mashed potato flakes, which by the way is if, uh, if you have any gluten sensitivities or have any friends that you're cooking for who have gluten sensitivities, but you also want to thicken up a gravy or soup or anything like that, use dehydrated mashed potatoes. Not only is it um, super cheap, it's gluten free, and it's not going to affect the flavor of your um, of your sauce all that much. Oh, did I cut out? Where did everybody go? Hey, say hi if you're still in. <laughs> oh gosh, I think I might have lost connection. Okay, we still alive? Yeah, it looks like we're still alive. Where is everybody? Oh, another, oh gosh. Did it freeze on me? Seems okay on this end. 
or oh this is embarrassing please don't be frozen please don't be frozen oh you gotta be effing kidding me come on don't be frozen okay we seem to be seem to be doing better okay I think I might have had a bit of a blip okay I think my twitch channel is just acting weird all right Hopefully I did not have a blip in service. Being a little less uh, delicate with this. Okay. And left of the filling. I wonder if we just went to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. And bacon. Skipped frames a few seconds ago. Oh, I hate Streamlabs. Um. <laughs> I need to get a different uh, software, probably. Okay. All right, there we go. dough there, and that bit of dough there, all right hopefully I didn't lose you guys during that time because I was showing some weird stuff on my end all right of course it's the last pie that looks the best it's just my luck isn't it finally Kind of understand what you're doing. Kind of. <laughs> I had to refresh. It said you went offline. Oh crap. Hopefully I'm not going to have to download and stitch all this together, which I'm probably going to have to. But oh well. Um, eh. All right. Cool. So I've got these pies all on here. And now. Got a little bit of dough left over. Normally I would end up with more, but we're gonna see what we can do. Okay, so I kind of want to do some sigils of Umberley, which is kind of a double wave sort of look. So first I'm just going to divide what I have left into about six portions. And then kind of do that sort of wave shape. I'm going to do kind of fold it over. Which I know looks a little bit more like a butterfly. That's perfectly fine. Um, so. Just 
going to I guess kind of pinch it and then kind of fold over the top. Yeah, it does look kind of like butterflies. That's okay. Someone who has never actually heard of the Forgotten Realms campaign could just think they look like pretty blue butterflies. Because I'm going to show you another trick once I'm able to get all of these umberly sigils formed. It's a little bit like a mushroom cloud, I'm not going to lie. But as you can see, I've been working with this for about mm, 20 minutes, and it's still pliable. And not melting on me or anything. That is the nice thing about hot water crust. I will admit I'm also kind of playing with the shape a little bit so I can see how it bakes up. The best looking one will be on the main picture for when I post all of this to my blog. Uh, the recipe cards, however, are only available through my Patreon and Ko-Fi. The, the video will be archived on YouTube if anyone wants to just kind of take notes and follow along. So. So yeah, there's our things. Uh, now I need to get an egg wash going. So, uh, put this away and this away and get another bowl. egg. All right. So I need to separate this egg. So I'm just going to Do that with my eggshell here. Kind of let it. Okay. And the egg yolk goes into a separate dish. Don't worry, we are using all of this. Need to add a splash of water to each. And provided that I didn't lose track of it anywhere, those things tend to disappear in my kitchen. That's just the way of things. Where are you, my food coloring? Gah. Ah, here we are. So, I'm just going to get a fork and a plate because I want to 
not stain my cutting board. We got some neon blue food coloring. I'm just going to add a couple of drops to that. Okay. Set this aside for now because first I need to put the egg white wash onto my pies. So. Gonna mix that a little bit with the water and then drag my pies over here and paint them over with our egg white. Right now I'm thinking these two pies are probably the most uh, good looking. So we'll put the most good looking sigils on them in just a little bit. Meows, what is it Mr. Moose? So I actually have three cats. I'm not sure if you can hear him, Moosey. He's like, mom, you've been doing this for over two hours. Why are you? Why aren't you done yet? Well, this thing takes a little bit more time. All right, so, got our egg wash on the pies. So next, I need to get my egg yolk wash onto our sigils. So, just going to Paint those and hope it takes. I'm just going to let that soak in for a little bit. Give these a quick rinse. These quick rinse. back my pies. Okay. Just gonna add a little bit of egg white wash back to this. Because now I'm gonna attach my sigils. Let's go with that one and that one. And it should stay attached on there as it bakes with the addition of the egg white wash that I have on there. Just gonna add a little bit more. Let's see, when you go to eat them, are they finger food or utensils? 
Um, I would say that you could pick them up and eat them, though uh, it really also just depends on how soon you pick them up after baking. Um, if you let it cool just a little bit longer, they're hand pies. This is a salt water crust, uh, hot water crust. And we're just gonna let that bake for how long? Goodness. Let that bake for 30 minutes, probably 30 to 45 minutes, which is okay because we have other things to make tonight. So just going to set a timer for 30 to see how it looks after 30 and get on our other food items. So just gonna shove stuff in here. There, don't need this. Big thing about cooking, clean as you later on this week. All right. Whew. Okay. Ready now? Maybe? Huh. Let's do it five. I think in this particular case, these pies might need to be cooked about an hour. Wow. What happened? Okay see how this is. I may have total, oh wait, no. Bake. Let's see how much, how warm do I need those? 400 degrees. And you just crank that up to 400 for my sausage balls and get these pies out of the oven. Let's see how badly I messed these up. And as you do you know I did make up this recipe uh, today. So, okay, not too shabby, but not exactly. Um, I wouldn't say that those are picturesque either. Though, maybe. Mm, that does taste good though. I'm not gonna lie. So let's get that spatula I was going to use. Let's use a plastic one. And I think this might be the prettiest one. But then I can just cover up the not so pretty one edge of that with the second prettiest one. Eh. And I just ruined the prettiness. Eh. Okay, so there you go. Ginormous pies with Umberly's um, sigil on them. Mmm. Drippings are delicious though. So this is definitely, I would say, a knife and fork pie, as we've learned tonight. And mostly that is simply from the bacon fat, which leaks all over the place. But, oh man. I'm pretty sure this is going to be delicious. So, um, right, let me just put these in a place where I can actually serve them. Let's put them in some Tupperware. Or do I have Tupperware large enough? We're about to find out. Like, here, babe, here's your lunch for the next four days. <laughs> All right, where's the lid? I have Tupperware, but no lids that fit. Ah. Okay, maybe that one will work. Do, 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 do. Have them for dinner. <laughs> I'm not, I'm gonna lie, they taste horrible. 
Yeah, um, I would, but it's also 10.30 and Carter and I already had dinner tonight, so. Okay, so this is gonna be lunches for the next few days. Now, the, one on the, pl the ones on the plate are gonna be photographed either later tonight